So it's my pleasure to announce the first speaker of the uh, second part of the cloud uh, session, and that is Mr. Naruaki. Uh, he's from NHK, so that's the Japanese Broadcasting Corporation. Uh, he joined NHK in 2016 as a broadcast engineer, and he's currently working on the development of services and facilities related to internet simultaneous delivery. The floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hello everyone, my name is Naroki Kato. I am a broadcast engineer in the IT division at NHK in Japan. I am involved in the engineering of internet related broadcasting services, including video streaming distribution, as well as digital service link with TV. Today, I would like to talk about a system that we devised due to a challenge that we had faced during a project. As the title shows, it is a system for live streaming that uses a cloud to easily add commentaries to videos from anywhere. In my presentation, I'd like to cover three key points. First, I will share the development background, what kind of challenge brought about the idea of our system. Then, I will explain the mechanism and effectiveness of the commentary adding system. Finally, I will describe the trial service we conducted using this system and conclusion. Okay, let's begin. NHK has been offering live streaming service for big sports events since 2010. That event was the Olympic Games. What we first offered in 2010 was a web service to deliver up to three channels. Since then, we have expanded the scale by supporting video distribution to smartphone applications and increasing the number of channels. In 2016, we worked on distributing a maximum of 29 simultaneous channels for events that were not broadcast on television. In this live streaming, we distributed video footage which contained only local audio, that is the sound from the venues. However, we distributed the video with Japanese commentaries for only one competition per day. The system configuration we used at that time is shown in this workflow. We received the video stream at NHK's Tokyo office, mixed the commentary audio using broadcasting equipment, encoded and delivered it to viewers via the cloud. This required expensive broadcasting equipment, technical staff, and space to accommodate these equipment and staff. If we were to add audio to all 29 channels simultaneously, we would need to secure the same number of sets of equipment, staff and space, which was not possible due to cost and location restrictions. To expand the scale of service, it is necessary to solve these problems and implement a low-cost solution with limited space and small operation. Thus, we started developing the new system. The hurdle for ad adding more commentary buses was cost and location restrictions. In order to solve this problem, we considered inventing a new system that uses minimum equipment and adopting a cloud environment using open inter connect internet connections. So we had to think about how to make stability and resilience. The next challenge was the cost of adding broadcast, broadcasting equipment. 
as it was not practical to prepare main sets of expensive broadcasting equipment, we considered using com commercially available equipment, such as laptops. We thought that it would be a good idea to encode only audio on the laptop and combine video and audio on the cloud. So we had to think about whether it was possible to synchronize video and audio in the cloud. The last problem was the difficulty of securing human resources. In order to solve this problem, we examined workflow automation systems, adopted auto mixing and direct encoding. So we needed to think about how it would work. Now I'd like to move into the mechanism and the effectiveness of the system. While examining how to solve these problems, we came up with the concept of a new system, which is shown in this workflow. Specifically, we prepared a laptop, we prepared a laptop computer and the internet connection on the commentator side, where only the audio mixed with commentaries is encoded. Then, the audio is combined with the video on the cloud server. As for the combining process of video and audio on the cloud server, we thought this could be done by using HLS, a common live streaming format, which has a manifest file read and played on the player side. We decided to add the information of the, of the mixed audio in this manifest file. However, synchronizing video and audio on the cloud turned out to be a challenge. This workflow shows the synchronization mechanism we worked out. With live streaming formats such as HLS, which have a manifest file read and played on the player, video and audio are separated into files of several seconds each called segments or chunks. Also, video and audio are marked with presentation timestamps, or PTS, which is the timing information used for playback. We considered using this PTS information to realize synchronization. Specifically, the com commentary application on the laptop leaves the timestamp information, which is marked in the original video and audio file. Then it gives the segment length and timestamp information of the original file to the mixed audio file with commentaries. A com commentaries, yeah. Since the audio file is encoded in real time while the commentator is viewing the original video and audio, the, the original audio and the, and the commentary audio are synchronized. Therefore, synchronization also works when the audio is combined with the video on the server because the mixed audio is marked with timestamp information according to the same standard as that of the video. Also, by adopting this method, even if the commentary application side fails to add a comment, service is continued only with the original video and audio, ensuring resilience. The main action on the cloud side is to write the information of the added audio file into the original manifest file and to wait for the audio file to be sent from the commentator's application. There are some excerpts from files, but shown in the left is the original manifest file, and on the right is the manifest file with the information added. It is typical to see that there are mixed playlists and original playlists. In this way, we achieved a mechanism in which only audio is handled on the commentator's application 
while the combining of audio and video is done on the cloud side. On the commentator's laptop, you only need to install a dedicated application to add learning commentaries. So just by installing an indicated application, as shown in this image, it is possible to add, it is possible to add sound from any place. In the image, a headset and audio interface are provided so that the commentator can add commentary in a better environment, but they are not a must, and you can add commentary only with a laptop computer and its microphone. So far, I have introduced the structure and mechanism. Now, I'd like to go over the system specifications. This system utilizes the HTTP-based live streaming protocols, and the version we developed this time is compatible with HLS and MPEG Dash. These formats can keep the original audio channels that were provided in the original video, so the user is given the option of viewing a video with commentary or without commentary. As for delay time, the system we have developed causes an overall delay of around 100 to 120 seconds. Now, let me briefly explain the delay. First, a certain delay occurs with the commentary application on the laptop side. This is a general delay that occurs in ordinary streaming viewing because the behavior of the application is the same as ordinary live video viewing. <coughs> then, another delay is caused by buffer to wait for the audio sent from the laptop computer. Considering the stability of the system, we usually store 10 files in the buffer when using six second chunks as in this example. So this amounts to a delay of 60 seconds. On the user side, a delay of about 20 seconds occurs, assuming a general viewing environment. This results in a total delay of approximately two minutes but this is expected to be shortened if we can use smaller chunks for lower latency in the future. I have explained the details of the system mechanism. Next, I'd like to talk about the system's additional feature, which is the capability of adding closed caption. Since the laptop computer on the commentator side handles only audio date, this clear audio date can be converted to text by using a speech recognition engine. As shown in this workflow, we use the speech to text engine, which is commonly available on the cloud. On the cloud side, subtitle files are generated from the converted text and subtitle information is added to the manifest file. This way, we achieve the closed captioning function. Now, I'd like to introduce our trial service, which also supported multilingual subtitles. We used our system at a robot contest called ABU Robocon, held in Vietnam this past August. This event was an international event and 17 countries participated. We added Japanese landing commentaries from Japan to the footage sent from the venue and delivered it along with multilingual subtitles uh, to, improve the, to, improve, to improve the quality of the subtitles we converted into text manually, which was then translated into multiple languages using a translation engine. In this trial, 
The text was translated into 12 languages and delivered to viewers around the world. That's the end of my presentation. To conclude, I'd like to summarize the main point. We devised a system that can easily add commentary from anywhere in order to solve the problems with adding commentary at sports event. This system offers low cost, space saving, and smaller operations. I have presented this system as a form of remote production utilizing the cloud. In the future, we plan to upgrade the system to improve the usability and the interface, and also implement the capability of adding individual audios to the same video from multiple places. Thank you for your time and attention. Thank you for the wonderful presentation. I guess there are some questions. We do have some time for questions. So if there's anyone in the crowd that wants to ask, please step forward to the microphone and just go ahead. So meanwhile, maybe I kick off with one question uh, because you've shown us the overall, overall architecture and the delay of the system. And I was wondering, uh, how do you cope? Or uh, is there any variable delay in the system? And how do you cope with the variable delay if there's any? Delay is fixed. The delay is fixed. Okay. Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, delay is fixed. Yeah. Meanwhile, anyone else? So very short. <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh, yeah. Maybe I could ask uh, uh, a second question because uh, I, I think it's really fascinating and probably throughout Europe, uh, many of uh, the broadcasters that we present, uh, represent in Europe would be interesting, uh, interested in such a system. So uh, how do you see uh, the future of the system? Is this something completely for NHK? Will you open source it? Will it be a product? How do you see that? On the system? Um can be uh, open source, but uh, we, we don't have plan to open source. But if anyone you anyone want to use this system, um, please contact me. Okay, yeah. wonderful. So once again, a warm applause for our presenter from NHK. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please tap the like button and also subscribe to our channel to receive notifications when we add new content. For more information about us, please visit simti.org. We'll see you next time.